Hey, welcome back to Presume Legal. I am Misha Janice, and we are reviewing day three of the Karen Reed trial that is currently going on. Yesterday, we did not have a session, and I will let you know what's up on the schedule for tomorrow at the end of this quick recap. Now, today was a half day. We only got to three full witnesses. So I will be recapping those three witnesses and I am going to try and make this short and sweet. Each of the three witnesses were in the uh, fire department paramedic role. The first witness was Anthony Flametti. He was the lead paramedic that night at the scene. He is a Lieutenant with the Canton Fire Department. Flametti testified that when he got to the scene, he identified the defendant, Karen Reed, as being the person who was most impacted by the situation. So while getting to John, the patient who was on the ground, and getting all his tools and instruments ready uh, to administer patient care, he looked, he, he focused his attention on Karen to try and get some additional information that could assist in his assessment of the patient. So the witness asked questions of Karen to try and determine how did John come to be in the state that he was in? Who is he? Who is this man who's laying in the snow? How did he get there? And he testified that in response, Karen Reed only stated, I hit him, I hit him. So the witness followed up Karen's response by trying to get additional information. Well, how did you hit him? Did you hit him with your fist? Did you kick him? Did you punch him? But he wasn't getting any responses back from Karen. He wasn't getting anything useful back from her. After about a minute of, you know, an unproductive conversation, he indicated to another EMT, Katie McLaughlin, who also testified today, um, to take over the conversation and attempt to get information to assist us in our patient care. And after that, he began working on John. He started doing the chest compressions on John. So that was the first incident where he said he heard the defendant state that she hit John. There was another incident during which the witness testified that he heard Karen Reed say that she hit John. And this was sometime while removing John on a stretcher and heading to the ambulance at this point, McLaughlin, the other EMT, who he told to try and get more information from, from Karen Reed, she was speaking with her. So uh, the witness stated he overheard Karen Reed at that time say the same thing to McLaughlin. I hit him. So, okay, so this is the second time that this witness is saying he's heard the defendant say, I hit him. The defense called, the defense counsel called that into question by asking the witness, how could he overhear that conversation when he already might have been inside the ambulance with the ambulance doors closed, focused on providing medical assistance to John in an ambulance that's parked 30 to 40 feet away from where that conversation was taking place? Well, on redirect, the Commonwealth clarified that there were at least two separate occurrences where this particular witness heard Karen make that admission. So in the end, if we're keeping score, I would say the Commonwealth won on that point. The next thing the defense called into question was the first time the witness recounted hearing Karen state, I hit him. In support of that, the defense presented police dash cam footage, right, which we've seen already. But they showed the police dash cam footage that showed the scene where everybody was congregated, right? It's grainy. It's difficult to see anything clearly, but it's good enough to discern the two women who were at the scene, as well as ver various paramedics wearing their bright yellow jackets, right? Moving back and forth on the screen. This is all through the windshield wipers going, snow hitting, sleet coming down, wind blowing. So it is very difficult to see the video. And the witness had some difficulty in identifying who exactly was on scene. You know, he said, we're all wearing the same fire department issued yellow jacket. So I can't really tell, you know, who this person is from that person. I can't tell if it's me on the ground doing chest compressions at this point, point in time. 
it wasn't really a slam dunk. But defense counsel played the moment from the ambulance, from when the ambulance pulled up. The EMTs could be seen, empty shapes and colors of their jackets could be seen getting out and heading over to John, who was laying on the ground. When asked, the witness admitted that he did not see on the video where he had that roughly one minute discussion with Karen when she first exclaimed to him that she hit him. So maybe that happened, maybe it didn't, but it wasn't being shown in that particular dash cam video that the defense, uh, that the defense presented. Finally, defense called into question why the witness had never testified to the fact that he told hospital staff what Karen told him. So today was the first time in cross-examination, in fact, that he told anybody that he relayed information to the hospital about John having been hit. The witness said he does remember telling the hospital that the patient may have been hit and that that hit may have been as a result of a vehicle hitting him. But he never wrote that down. He never wrote that in his incident report. He never spoke it to anybody. Uh, for example, Proctor's report. In his grand jury testimony, he never testified that he relayed that very important information to the hospital staff. And even on direct examination with the Commonwealth, he never mentioned that he told the hospital that the patient may have been hit or somebody told him that the patient was hit and that he had suspicions that it could be from a car impact. So at the end of the day, we're wondering why this is the first time that anybody's heard this particular witness say that he relayed the important information to the hospital. And we're left questioning whether he in fact did hear the defendant say, I hit him in the first instant because it wasn't seen on the video footage. And in the second instant, because he may have been locked away in the closed ambulance several feet away from where that conversation took place. So that was what I got from, from Lieutenant Anthony Flametti's testimony. The next witness was Matthew Kelly, who is also a firefighter paramedic for the city of Canton. This witness testified that he didn't see the other shoe anywhere in the area. So he mentioned that he noticed John was only wearing one shoe and that, you know, he, he took a cursory glance around the general vicinity and he didn't notice any other shoe in the area. Now this may or may not be important. I don't know, but if the defense has a theory that evidence was planted, then this could be an important element to, to show that there it was some after the fact placing of John's belongings at the scene. Also, this was this witness testified that he never heard the defendant say, I hit him. He realized that she was um she was frantic, she was screaming, but he never heard her say to anybody or to just in general, he never heard her say, I hit him. And his story has been consistent from day one through his testimony, through interviews, through, um, you know, anytime he's been questioned about it. On redirect, the Commonwealth got from him that an admission that other people on the scene may have heard different things at different times. So just because he didn't hear her say, make an admission, that doesn't mean that it was never made. The next witness, and this is the last full witness for the half day of day three, was Lieutenant Francis Walsh, who is also a firefighter paramedic. He was the driver of one of the ambulances that was dispatched to the scene. We didn't hear too much new information from this witness. The only thing that stood out about his testimony is his recollection that the screaming woman, who was the defendant, all he heard her say was, quote, is he alive? Close quote. And she said that in a very loud, distraught, crying voice. Um, and that she was definitely the most upset person out of everybody on the scene. He also did notice that John was missing his right shoe 
and he noticed the injuries and bruising to John's face. This witness did not go to the hospital. He stayed uh, at the scene and he advised the he advised one of the police officers at the scene that the patient had signs of trauma on his body. He was able to let the officer know that because he had been in the ambulance assisting with patient care before the ambulance started the transport to the hospital. He did not go to the hospital, remember, so he got out of the ambulance before it left. And once he got out of the, uh, out of the ambulance, he advised the officer of those summary findings that there were signs of trauma on John's body. So the next witness was Katie McLaughlin, who was also a firefighter paramedic, but we did not finish her direct examination even today. We are going to finish that tomorrow. We are also, well, I'm not exactly sure how they're going to do this with, uh, with the viewing, with the video, but the judge advised that tomorrow is field trip day. They are going to go view the scene, I'm assuming. Um, she let the jury know to wear comfortable clothes and comfortable shoes, but tomorrow is going to be a full day. They are going to finish the testimony for Katie McLaughlin and then um, head out, hit the streets. So that is it for today's testimony. Once again, I don't really see either side as having any slam dunks. Definitely no, definitely nothing was solved today. Um, so we're just hanging in there for more information, more testimony, more facts to try to determine what actually happened and who's responsible. So that's all that I have for you today. Also, I just wanted to thank everybody. Thank all the new subscribers. Today we're celebrating having hit 2,000 subscribers for this brand new baby channel. Look at y'all. I see you. So that makes me very happy. Welcome to everybody. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can continue seeing these recaps and also get um, so that you can continue to get more content. You guys are awesome. And if nobody has told you today already, you are appreciated. You are loved. You are worth it. You are worthy and nothing can dull your shine. All right. That's all I have for you today. Until next drop. Take care. Peace.